In this video, we'll be deploying a managed Kubernetes cluster in under 15 minutes with the Ionos Enterprise Cloud. Those of you who are not familiar with Kubernetes, there's many resources on the internet going through exactly what Kubernetes is, the benefits that Kubernetes can bring to an enterprise organization and also within the DevOps realm. Let's start by logging into the data center designer on the Ionos Enterprise Cloud. If required, you can also create a group which can have the relevant privileges for creating and managing the Kubernetes clusters within the account. Select User Manager from the Manager Resources on the banner bar. A group can be created and the associated privileges apply to for creating Kubernetes clusters and also relevant other tasks that the user wishes to operate against. To start creating a Kubernetes cluster, select the Kubernetes Manager from the Manager Resources menu. Here we can see there's already a cluster created, but we shall create a cluster from scratch and add relevant node pools to that cluster. First, select Create Cluster and then provide a name. Here we can see the cluster is currently being created in the background and will be ready in a couple of minutes. Anybody wishing to use the API for certain commands, we have a link for the API UUID and also URL reference can be located and found from the link as well. It also provides the API documentation link, which once clicked will bring up the relevant documentation for the managed Kubernetes and other resources within inside the Ionos Enterprise Cloud. To check the status of the cluster, we can click on the refresh button. Once the cluster has been created, the status will change to green. This symbolizes that the cluster is now available and ready for node pools to be added to the cluster. To do this, click on create node pool, provide a name for the node pool, and then select the relevant data center. You have the option to either create a new data center from scratch or utilize any of the existing data centers which may be created with inside your account. We'll create a new data center. We're going to create a data center which is located in the UK. With the data center created, we can now increase the number of nodes we would like inside the node pool. In this example, I'll just select three for the time being. I can also choose the CPU architecture. The UK data center has Intel Skylakes and Cascade Lakes, so I'll select the Intel CPU architecture for this model. And also I can supply the number of cores that I wish to deploy inside the node pools. These are dedicated CPU cores, so four cores will be getting eight hyperthreads. And I can also increase the number of RAM that I want to allocate to the worker nodes as well. In this case, six gigabytes of RAM. I'll leave the availability zone as auto so that the worker nodes on no pool will be created across the various availability zones in the data center. And I'm also going to allocate SSD storage uh, for my no pool as well. Once I'm happy with those values, I can click on create no pool. We'll get some validation that this is the relevant configuration which will be created for the node pool. If I'm happy with that, I'll click on OK. And then here we can see the node pool is starting to be provisioned. If we expand out the fall down arrow, we can see more information about what's happening in relation to the node pool creation. At the moment, the nodes are being created in the background and the status will eventually change. While waiting for the node pool to be created, which will take roughly about 10 minutes or so, we can also download the relevant cube config for the cluster. This allows us to interact using cube cuttle with the API, which will communicate directly into the cluster itself. We'll just wait now for the node pool to be created and the status to change to green, which will demonstrate that it's available and ready to use. Here we can see the node pools now created. 
It's showing green and the status is now active. We can now close down the Kubernetes Manager and we can also view more information about the cluster inside the user interface of the data center designer. Here we can see the nodes which have been created. We can also highlight more information about the current status of those nodes, if they're running and if they're healthy. Okay, what we'll do now is that we'll connect to the cluster utilizing a workstation. In this case, I'm just going to upload the, the kubeconfig.yaml file. With the kubeconfig.yaml file now updated, I can export the configuration. And now I can run relevant commands against the cluster to make sure the cluster is healthy and responding. First, let's run a cluster info, which will give us information about the current master, um, the status if it's running, also any other services which are running. And then we'll also look at the nodes as well, which are running in this case. All three nodes are running, been running for four minutes, and also displaying the relevant version as well. So this concludes the video in relation to deploying the Kubernetes managed cluster on the Arnos Enterprise Cloud. In the next series of videos, I'll look at how to utilize the load balancer service and also persistent volume claim as well. Thank you for watching.